So in the previous video, I left you off with this idea of why do we see a minus minus in competition when we clearly saw that paramecium aurelia was able to beat out paramecium caudatum in that GF cause experiment. And of course, we're going to answer that question in this video that continues our idea of competition and specifically competitive exclusion by stating the following. In competitive exclusion, we have this further idea that we weren't able to touch upon in our previous video for purposes of time, but now we can really look into this idea in depth. So we have that experiment, and it proved to us that, yes, of course, two things with the same ecological niche, if they're grown together, if they're raised together, they can't coexist proven by the GF cause experiment. Furthermore, what we can state is that species with similar fundamental niches, so species, two different species, let's say, with, the key word here now is similar, not identical, but similar fundamental niches, fundamental niches, and remember what fundamental niches are versus realized niches for right now, can actually coexist. They can coexist if there is one or more, if there is one or more differences, so D-I-F-F-S for differences, in their respective niches. So their respective niches are quite similar, but there's a bit of a difference, a one or more differences, that allows them to coexist with each other within the same community, of course, because we're talking about community interactions within community ecology. So how is this possible? Well, this is mainly actually due to the fact that we see a very important principle in all of life, in all of biology, called evolution via natural selection, something that we've really, really looked at in great, great detail. And what we realize is that through this principle, we know that one species in this situation, one species out of these two species, let's say, that are interacting, um, is probably going to be using rather, or, or not rather, but maybe some different resources, using different resources. And if it's using different resources, then evolution will act on it differently and natural selection will act on it differently because there are different resources being used. The environment is being used differently because of the different niches, because of the small difference yet still important difference between the two fundamental niches that are similar but slightly different. Okay, slightly different. Now, let's go back to our idea of competitive exclusion one more time. So let me rewrite competitive exclusion just to remind ourselves that under this idea of a coexistence that's possible, competitive exclusion will state the following. Competitive exclusion will state that one species, even though one they're surviving, they're coexisting, there's still a minus-minus interaction, there's still a cost to both because one of those species is actually going to be excluding the other from something very important. Excludes another, let's say, species that's very similar, let's say, from part of their, what we would consider, fundamental niche. And if we're excluding one species from their own fundamental niche, that would mean that we are, of course, undergoing a minus-minus interaction. This causes that one species that's being excluded to never reach its fundamental niche, and because it's never reaching its fundamental niche, it's going to be reaching its realized niche. That's how we really see this in reality. This is how we see this um, in nature. The idea that a realized niche shows up only because we have a fundamental niche that's being excluded, that's being, uh, let's say, turned down upon because of the competitive exclusion that we've observed through this interaction between two species. So this is competitive exclusion happening in reality. And that's why we see our realized niche. Another important idea to understand about competitive exclusion is that we end up with a term that we call resource partitioning. This is a big idea in community ecology. It's an idea of trade-offs that we've seen in our previous videos on population ecology, and the same idea and same theme will show up here. Resource partitioning is the idea that there's going to be what we call a differentiation of niches. So this is a fancy term for something quite simple. Differentiation of niches. That's the partitioning, the separation that's happening. 
And this is going to be the idea that the differentiation is what's going to be enabling differentiation that enables something quite simple. S enables similar species, so several species, so two letter P's here, to coexist in community. And that's an idea that we've established previously because we established that they can coexist. And why can they coexist? Because there's resource partitioning. Because there's a differentiation. That small difference that I mentioned earlier, that small difference will lead to different resources, will lead to a realized niche, will, reach, will lead to differentiation. And that's what's going to allow this coexistence. The smallest difference, the smallest partitioning of resources is going to cause a big influence, a big ability of coexistence within this community that's critical for community ecology as a whole. So that's why we do see similar things living in the same area at the same time. Finally, in this idea of competitive exclusion, we have to understand the idea that different species with what we consider allopatric different species, so we're talking about several species, so two letter P's, with, and there's this term that we've already looked at before, what we term allopatric, meaning separate. For this situation, we'll just call allopatric separate because it's different country, different origin. Separate and also if we focus on the sympatric side of the story, that's going to be not separate, but actually uh, I would consider it in ecology, this would be considered overlapping. And specifically when we say the, what is separate and what is being overlapped, that's the idea of the populations. So let's read this over. Different species with allopatric, separate, and sympatric populations. Populations that either overlap or populations that either are separate, that are separated from each other. The key one in community ecology that we want to look at is not the separate populations. That's not important to us. There's no interactions. In the overlapping populations, there are several interactions of importance. And specifically, we're going to state that in overlap areas, the areas that specifically have the overlapping populations, the species, and we're talking about several, so we have two letter P's, differ in several ideas, in several key components that evolution acts upon, such as they differ in structural ecological ecological and they also differ in their behavioral characteristics so these are huge huge things that evolution acts upon and that's why we see the different resources the resource partitioning the competitive exclusion all the ideas that we mentioned because there are areas of overlap there are areas of interactions and that's the key in ecology looking at these interactions and seeing that there are structural ecological behavioral differences between overlapping populations that are giving us these coexistence of fundamental similar niches and in addition to this, we have to make sure that we understand that because there's differences in these critical evolutionary components, we're going to have a divergence. There's going to be this idea of non-competition. These individuals don't directly compete, and if they don't directly compete with each other specifically for those LRs, those limiting resources, there is, there's indefinitely going to be a final idea of the divergence of traits. And what we mean by divergence of traits is simply what we term in ecology and community ecology something called character displacement. Characters will look different and act different and be different from other characters of similar species, of similar fundamental niches, simply because there is a lack of direct competition, because there is a lack of similarity in structure, ecology, or maybe even behavior within these overlapping areas that is causing this ultimate differentiation. Final note about competitive exclusion, we have to understand that natural selection, of course, plays a big role. And we mentioned natural selection briefly in this idea of evolution by natural selection, but the final idea to understand about natural selection is that natural selection actually, believe it or not, does not favor this competition. It actually favors individuals that avoid competition. 
it favors individuals that avoid or even reduce their competition because competition is a minus minus interaction. Both individuals lose. One individual might win, but they aren't going to experience their full fundamental niche because they're going to be losing at some point or another in terms of the resources. The other individual might go extinct like the paramecium caudata that we saw. So this actually natural selection favors individuals that avoid or reduce competition for resources uh, completely. And that makes a lot of sense because competition, though important, though a critical driving factor, is a still a minus-minus interaction based off of the experiments and ideas that we've covered.